Welcome to Big Brother. The sun has set on day seven in the house. By now, we're all wondering who is going to receive those first nomination votes. Tomorrow night, we'll know. So far, the 12 housemates have hugged, kissed and laughed their way into a tightly knit group. While most of them seem to genuinely like each other, we're about to find out how strong those friendships are. How much of their behaviour is natural? How much is tactical? How far will they go to save their skin? Someone has to leave this house. Someone has already made the move that could get them nominated and evicted. Tonight is a form guide for tomorrow's first drama-charged round of nominations. We're looking for clues to where those vital votes might go. Later tonight, we'll be talking to our resident psychologist, Carmel Hill, and the winner of last year's Big Brother, Ben Williams, clearly the best at avoiding nomination and eviction. But first, catch-up time. It's been 48 hours since our last daily dose of Big Brother. Let's go back into the household loop. Day six in the Big Brother house, and there were no duties for the housemates. They finally earned cutlery, and this provided another talking point for Jessica and Damien. Where we get cutlery last night? Yeah, I got some forks, man. They should have given us forks. That would have been a lot more handy. <laughs> what are forks? Forks? <laughs> they're a cross between a spoon and a fork. No, they're spades. No, they're sporks. Splays. Splays. Sporks. Splays. Sporks. Splays. Sporks. Splays. To me, it's a splade. I'm sorry. Oh, God. You and your splades. The week of personal revelations continued, with Aaron opening up to Sarah about yeah, his childhood. Like... The Oregon Street, this comes in a degree. Yeah. It comes in a degree, man. It's not... You can be a strict parent and still be a loving parent. How old were you when you left your dad? 16. I remember the, I remember the day that I left my dad. I remember saying to dad, I'm leaving. He goes, you're not never coming back. I said, I don't ever want to come back. He said, see you later. I said, see you later. And I left. And I was so... That was the, like the most... That was the turning point of my life, mate. Oh, it was the biggest thing. I said, I'm moving out. And I was 16. And my dad was like, what? So my Your grandparents, dad. I lived with them for four years, and oh, they used to call me rubber lips because I would never shut up. Uh, no, I'm trying to shoot, trying to eat still there. still talking. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> now that Sarah has won Aaron's trust, he decided, just as Turkan has, to join her campaign for a pierced household. You all right? Just, just remember to breathe. Because if you stop breathing, that's when you start... Feeling oh, fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you still that's different. <laughs> you that's different. You that's different. You Oh, you love it. Yeah. It looks so good. I like it, eh? It looks really good. You keep going, it actually does look good, man. It gets you. A glow. A glow. Very sweet. As day seven unfolded, it seemed that Damien is paying more attention to Mirabai than Jessica. That was funny. Oh, I have you too. Oh, gorgeous. You look like you belong in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> and perhaps Jessica is diverting hers to Marty. They need a punching bag. I can be your punching bag. Jess, I'd hurt you. <laughs> day by day, we're getting to know more and more about the new housemates. As we go to the break, let's get a little reminder of who they said they were before they went in. I'm outgoing person. Very outgoing. I'm easy going. Well, I'm a bit of everything, actually. I'm fun loving. Fun. I like to have a lot of fun. I like to be crazy. Yeah. Just sort of like the life of the party, I guess. I'm very vibrant and bubbly. I'm loud. I'm very loud. I might be a bit outspoken. Honest, trusting person. I'm twisted. I'm everywhere. No people straight up what they're like. I don't think there is a real me. I'm a bit of a rescuer. A storyteller. I'm a good entertainer. I'm a very good motivator. All I'm going to try and do is just be good friends for everyone in there. I love to make new mates. I'm friendly, but I don't get too close. I just get along great with anyone who loves a laugh. Always like to have a laugh. I like to laugh. I like to make people laugh. 
I can't be anyone that I'm not. I can't go in there and put an act on. Being in the house for 12 weeks, you can't fake it for that. Oh, I'm so funny. What is? It's not a nice <laughs> I think it's really hilarious. Oh, I can't wait. I didn't like him. <laughs> He's evil. He sat on me when he messed up. <laughs> no, I think I've made it up to you today, though. Ah, uh, yeah, I knew that was a sight. <laughs> they're all at least saying they're mates in the house right now, but they're about to nominate someone to go. Each housemate has to nominate two others. A vote that means, I want you out of the house. But who will they go for? Threats, people who might be more popular than they are. Irritations, people who might drive them crazy. Well, joining me now is a man whose job it is to know everything about life in the house. Our Daily Show supervising producer, Chris Blackburn. Chris, hello, welcome. Now, you are the man on the money. What do you think is going to happen? Well, there's a lot been happening so far. It's uh, it, there's a lot of activity going on. We've already had, uh, I think, on day three, we had everyone just about taking their clothes off in the shower. So there's no inhibitions in the house. Um, there's been no conflict so far, no open conflict. Um, but it's bubbling along. You can get the you get the sense that uh, a lot is going to happen. The thing is, the longer they're in there, and it's not very long before before they start showing their their true self. Well, when you throw a dozen people together, connections and threads of friendship sprout in all directions at once. In our first week, a few have stood out. This is our family. It is. This is going to be our family for like how many weeks? Nathan and Sarah were the first to separate from the group. This could be the start of a strong friendship. I'm really numb. I'm like this. Oh no. And I could even do like a stalk. <laughs> so you, <laughs> it's like origami. What's the purpose for that? So you make it dangerous? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. I said everyone needs to be the same as you. I'm a personality, not a sexuality. Well, that, I say I'm yeah. born, you know, I've only got one name and it's Yeah, Sarah. yeah, exactly. So, exactly. When, that's when you told me, I noticed I was like, oh yeah. yeah Do you know what I mean? Just straight away. Yeah. 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 And that's probably why we like grab a pad for each other. We're right. just discussing our first shower. Well, I found, I found probably, probably my friend in the house. Yeah, yeah, we, we get along like a bathrobe. <laughs> Yeah, we bath over over right now. Sarah's comfortable nature has no, triggered no, conversations no, no. all around. Yeah. yeah, I've got a girlfriend. Yeah. Something in common. Yeah. How much you seeing a girl? Yeah, I've been seeing a girl for four years. For four years, no. You can pick it high. So Marty's been learning from the girls. Marty has spent most of the time just hanging with the boys. Peter was a little distracted at our launch show. I thought he'd left the iron on. I wasn't kissing like two. And I looked down and my flight was undone. Oh, and I said that in the car. I went, you know what? I said, check. I go, check the lip gloss, check the hair. And then I went, check your flies are on. I go, and imagine if someone got out and their fly was down. Fly was down, halfway through the thing. And I've got oh, And I thought, okay, well. I'll do that up. And I've realised, what am I doing? Everybody's looking at me. You're making it obvious. And then everyone's laughing and whatever else. I'm just going, I'm an idiot. But comfortably zipped, he's relaxing into the house and making friends with everyone. Hey, hey, no. Yeah. One more thing. Are you a Monty Python fan by any chance? Yes. <laughs> we have the exact same thing. Yeah. 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 But like a typical Aussie household, it's boys outside and girls in the kitchen. Yeah, I feel a bit like you and sisters. Sisters. <laughs> we are. We look after each other. sisters. All in all, it's been a good week for group bonding. <laughs> Well, it'll be interesting to see who loves who after tomorrow night. When we return, housemates tread the fine line between friendship and desire.
It didn't take long for some of the house friendships to go further. But in the Big Brother house, how real can that romance be? Do you grab a partner because you think the audience won't separate you with an eviction? Or in that hot house of cameras and microphones, can love truly grow? I'm just saying, whoever comes in your head, you know who it was well, in the first walk. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, uh, Kate. Come on, maybe. Come on, Kate. Yeah, Jess. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe Jess. Maybe Jess. There was certainly an instant attraction between Jessica and Damien. I'm so glad that all the people are just so on our level. Oh, level, level is the big word, hey. And, you know, you're, you're, I think you're on the level that I'm at as well. We've got this frequency around. I think we might have a frequency, you know? Yeah, it's a frequency. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, in, I'm tuning into your station. I'm picking up some... I'm Jess Earth and welcome to the Big Brother house. Hello, Jess. 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 Hello, Jess.
Now, speaking of people getting close, Chris, have we got a love triangle starting up in the house? We think we think we have a love triangle. We've got. I mean, Damien seems to be the the house hunk. I'd say he's keen on the girls, undiscerningly, in fact. And he's been floating around Mirabai a lot of the time. There's that lovely guitar scene where he's teaching her how to play, and he's sort of touching her hand and showing her the chords and fiddling with the plectrum and. It's all very nice and sweet, and, and we were talking before about whether people are putting it on. Now, I don't think that was put on. Um, I think that was genuine. I think there is a bit of a, a spark there, and she's talking about the fact that it's, she has a situation, which I believe is a boyfriend, long-term mm. boyfriend outside the house, and you could see her discomfort. So that is, that's a real one. Um, then there's Jessica floating around as well, and uh, Damien sort of seems to be giving her a bit of attention too when it suits him. So uh, it's hard to tell with that one, it really is. And I think Jessica, I think she's keen on him too. And they're just sort of vying for each other. I think Mirabai will win out on that one. Or else maybe somebody else will join the love triangle and we'll end up with a love square. <laughs> After the break, the river of tears. Which way will it float the votes? Tears are falling from my face. Life is a freeway. Stay in your own freaking lane. I don't want you driving behind me. I don't want you driving in front of me. Drive next to me. We'll drive parallel. Stay in your own lane. I'll stay in mine. You stay in yours. Just give each other a wave along the way. We've seen how friendships and romance might affect the nominations. You won't vote for your best mate and you hope they won't vote for you. And you won't vote for the person you want to pass in the pool next week. But what about someone who's opened up to you? Nathan, Peter and Shannon have all shared some powerful personal stories with the group. How will that affect them? I, I, I remember the exact moment both mum and dad passed away. I was there. And, I, and when mum passed away, I was sitting out the front steps because, you know, I'd been going on all day. And, and she was breathing really loud, like, because she had um, fluid in the lungs. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I heard it stop. And I, I, to my girlfriend at the time, I just said, it stopped, and that's when I heard all the tears and whatever else. And then with Dad, it was like, that was a bit of a, it was very a smart ass, right? Yeah. And so with Dad, like, we're waiting and waiting, you know, we're all sitting in the room and we're, you know, doing the whole, and he hated anybody fussing over him or doing yeah. anything, you know? Yeah. And so it was the moment, the moment Meg started talking about yeah. just getting trashed or whatever, he stopped, and so we weren't thinking about it, and yeah. he's gone. He, he, he just stopped reading, you know, and... and well, the last thing he saw was you guys interacting, having a good time laughing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, that, that was really, really strange. Both, both those moments were really, really big moments in my life. Uh, got married at 25. We're uh, in love. You've been so Uh, yeah, divorced at 28. She had a very tough childhood. Her parents were divorced and she had a pretty tough... And a lot of those issues came up during the marriage. Mm. Um, well, that's so happy. She hadn't dealt with them before. So I think mean, that's so yeah. important that you have to, I mean, that's not right, to, yeah, but you no. have to be, like, so deal, deal with yourself yeah. before you can oh, make a life yeah. with someone else. Yeah, yeah. So it's really unfair oh. to the other person. And that's yeah. right. Look, I think a relationship or a marriage should be two strong people coming yeah. together. And yeah. what happens is, if, if that's not the case, you sort of start to rely on each other. Yeah. And you, you become really weak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what I, we, you know, I found after all those years that I'd, I'd felt I'd given so much, I sort of stopped and thought, I'd hadn't become anything or hadn't done anything for me. I've um, had many serious things happen in my life. When I was 17, my brother died um, in a motorbike accident. Um, I was at school, I was 17, he was 18. It happened while I was at high school and I got actually brought out of high school to get told my brother was dead. That just completely just raveled me. Um, I was, we shared a room, we're really, 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 really close. Um, even though he fought like cat and dog, yeah. he was a bouncer. Anyway, <laughs> but bouncers are great. <laughs> <laughs> no, and um, but yeah, anyway, so 
so I was at school and the worst thing was it really like just unraveled my family because it was there was only us two boys yeah. and um, my mum and dad or my dad actually when the accident happened was in Kalgoorlie he was driving past my brother was on a motorbike he was driving past my brother um, my brother my brother was at the stop sign like waving or no no it was at the, it was driving up other side waving so dad drove past him waved back at my dad like that so they both waved at each other and then dad had a big bang looked in the rearview mirror and saw dad Graydon flip up in the air oh. and dad um, waving Goodbye. yeah yeah and then like so dad just spun the car straight back around and um what, what actually happened is he um landed in the middle of a road like um where the, there was a school crossing this whole like um class of kids saw and he hit a pedestrian pole and it burst the aorta in his heart so yeah and um so dad was just dad was with him when he died dad was just completely crushed and mum was just my mum's the most beautiful in the world and like yeah she just yeah that completely broke her in two yeah so um then like after that, and then that's basically when, when that happened in Kalgoorlie, the whole of my friends and everyone just completely rattled around me. That's why I love Kalgoorlie so much. Like, mm. I was so loved and taken care of there. So oh, tell us about yourself, Shannon. Okay. I did my HSC, and that was a big thing for me. <laughs> so I did the HSC, and I actually spent year 11, year 12, a complete bulimic, and nobody knew. And that was good. I liked the fact that no one knew that. Um, and I was still playing representative netball for the Australian Catholic Schoolgirls team, and I nearly... <coughs> I was literally murdering myself while trying to be an athlete and trying to do the yeah. HSC oh, yeah. trying to be funny and yeah. trying not to let anyone see what I was doing so I, I was really stressed at that time and um so I came out of I went into hospital and um that was disgusting because you get sent to a psych unit no yeah. one has a there's no such thing as a program for this disease thing so it must be so horribly trapped in that yeah. thing and you probably knew because like, you're a very aware person you knew that what you were doing was wrong i knew i was trapped yeah and then the but thing not is, first. Yeah. You, you you build the entrapment you actually dig your own grave yeah. then you line it and then you start shoving sand on top of yourself yeah so chris why do you think they're revealing such intimate details of their lives to each other at this stage I don't know. I think, I mean, some cynics say they might be doing it as a strategy to win some sort of sympathy. Well, I say, I watched those last week, and I say they're far too personal and far too powerful for them to be some sort of strategy. I mean, we watch a lot of material on our show, and uh, one of the editors the other day was watching the scene where Peter was telling the story about his parents dying one after the other, and um, someone went through to the edit suite and came back and said, oh, ooh, the editor's crying in there. So. Um, they were they were really really powerful stories, and I think there's a lot more of those personal stories to come out. And there's no way in the world that you would bring that sort of thing up for effect. I think you'd be very cynical if you thought people were doing that. It's an incredibly intimate thing to reveal to people that you've known for a couple of days. I know, and it, that surprises me. I, that's exactly what I thought. Why on earth would would you do that? What is it that's motivating them to to bring it out? But they did. They all brought out the most incredible. I mean, Nathan's story about his brother. Her dying in the motorcycle accident was just horrendous, uh, horrendous to listen to. And then the same response, people, you know, with tears welling up in their eyes. Do you think it became a bit competitive? Who'd had the, uh, no. who had the deeper story to tell? I think it was interesting, the reaction when Katrina w was listening to Pete's story and, and went away. Uh, she started uh, sobbing and went off to the bedroom. And some people said... She shouldn't have done that. It was it was his story, and she was crying for effect. Now, the way I saw that, I I I watched her, and I I felt sympathy for her. And I, I she told the story about her grandmother had died on her birthday, and uh, that had reminded of her grandmother's death. But some people said she was selfish, and she was uh, trying to draw attention to herself. So, I mean, this is the brilliant thing about watching reality TV. Everyone has their own idea on people's motivations. Mm. Yeah, there's no ultimate truth. It's just interpretations, isn't no. it? And everyone has a different interpretation. And, and funnily enough, it seems that men and women seem to have a completely different interpretation because the women were the ones who were saying she was looking for attention. She shouldn't have done that. And I think the men actually felt sorry for her. Who knows? Anyway, the next question, of course, is how far will these friendships stretch? We're about to get some big clues to where those nomination votes might land. Right leg, bring your palms to the front, bend the leg and make sure the ankle is directly under the knee and turn your body's front on. We're losing them one by one, they're dropping like flies. The girls will be the last one standing. Oh, this is sitting class. You shouldn't feel it working in your muscles. Now, sit up. Right now. Nice. Lean back. 
and breathe. Now up and go to the fridge. <laughs> Our housemates had no choice but to pull together this week. But a niggle here, a little moment there, some of the fun is fading. There have been a lot of massages, but a few people have been rubbed the wrong way. And some housemates are being irritated. The question is, will they scratch that itch with a nomination vote? No, 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 we've got it the wrong way around. No, turn it around. No, 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 turn it around. This won't fit. Turn it around this way. Sure? Yep, yep, yep. What's that? Because I said so. Okay. Any, anyone here? Okay. Well, we've got one who's got a fiancé. Um, I haven't established the others. Um, this one's too young. Marty is too young. I'm sorry. Too young. For sex. Oh! Oh! <laughs> How do you guys feel about Damien having the big bed? I don't mind, seriously. Everything's fine with you too? I'm fine. Yeah, it's cool. Like, I just I want mean, to ask what you guys want tonight. To... And it's... See if you guys want... You, if you're, you're, the, you're a bigger guy. Like, maybe you might need more... See you guys fair. tonight. And then... Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean... It doesn't work. I'm, I'm, awesome. yeah, I'm fine. And I mean, Jay, Damien wants it more than I do, okay. so that's cool. But if cool. it doesn't work for you, just say so. Oh, that'll do the job. Just water. Yeah. Water with the things, yeah. All right, Damien, get into it. Come on. I'm eating, dude. Oh, yeah. No, Jamie. Huh? We'll do it. We'll do it. Patience. 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 It's a bit of plan. but it bears sweet fruit. All right. Okay. Oh, how can you such a cheese for me? I just dislike it. Love it. Yeah, I just and just how much has gone down to in the last couple? Of they just scoffed it. Like, you should have saved some. And put your name on it, Katrina. No, no it's just, yeah, but people, people share. But the thing is that some things that some people eat, others don't eat, and it would have been nice if there was a bit more considerate. Because I had, I had a chance to eat a lot of avocado, and I said, well, no, there's other people yeah, who I eat it, just bit avocado. Well, I love, well, I I love, I love ham, and I love ham. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, do you know, it's, it's about sharing. Yeah, do you it's difficult when there's so many people. Like... Yeah, Damien was just so shitless last night. I've heard him double bed. Oh, oh, that was sitting saying, there. Oh, no, you did. You, you kept slipping. You came and sat with us, and you kept fighting the whole night. You can stop fighting. Oh, well, Sarah was right like, next to him, so she got the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, this is good. Oh, no, that's what you want. Oh, Thirty. Oh, Gotta go there, smile. Oh, well, before you do instant shoulder engagement, to carry on. Yes, Elbows more in front. Always in front and straight for the lift. You just have to go up there. That's well, it should be flat like. But yeah, the boys always come up here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but again, you shouldn't be doing carbine under. You should be in a signature side. Yeah, that's it. That's, my, that's where you should be functioning from. If you have a 24 hour, 48 hour break, the, the fibres start to spindle and become thicker and denser. Yeah. You give them that recovery time. If you go back in training when they're vulnerable and still splintered, once again, Mass, you need testosterone number one. Yeah. You know, and, and for females, not all of us have a high testosterone level. <laughs> yeah, so it's inter I mean, there's lots of different philosophies. All that I know is, um, it should be fun. At the end of the day, train with a partner, or yeah. do a yeah. yeah. full body comp Because it, mm. it's music, it's people, it's fun, it's achievable, and it's... It's a uh, drink. Like a drink. Some people don't like that. Oh, I'd love it. You know, uncomfortable yeah. space. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I must say, certain people are, are challenging parts of me. Yeah. So, and it's good. It's good. Two hammers. How many reps? I do 30 on each arm. Yeah. I think each arm should. That's alright. If Shannon can do it, you can. Yeah. <laughs> yes, every time it's like, I'm going to go, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Shannon did 30. Yeah. 12. 12. <laughs> 12. <laughs> 12. <laughs> 12. <laughs> Well, we're starting to see a little bit of conflict inside the house. They're starting to grate on each other's nerves. For example, pinching each other's food, Turkan trying to talk about Damien surreptitiously with people in the corners, and of course, the irritation with certain noisy smells occurring in the bedroom at night. Are you seeing any other areas where people are reacting to the dominant characters? Well, yeah, we saw Shannon the other day have her... Uh, she's a fitness instructor, and she was doing her class, and everyone started off in the class, and one by one, 
another group sort of split away from it and Nathan led a hilarious counter aerobic session and it was all very very funny but at one stage you see Shannon uh, sort of say well group we might move over here because they're making a bit of noise and it was that sort of sense that there was a split in the group here were the serious health people and here were the people who didn't take health seriously at all in fact but do you think there was any malice intended there? I don't think there's any malice from Nathan uh, I don't know maybe there was he had to know he's probably he was laughing at her he was he was taking the mickey and uh, she knew it and I, I suppose he probably knew it too I mean he was they were rolling around and in, in hysterics as were we all so what do you think the housemates goal is at the moment to endear themselves to the other housemates or to the people at home watching well that's the interesting thing when Sarah Marie was such a, a popular character across Australia last time uh, when the when the people came out of the house, the housemates, when they were evicted, people used to say, do you know how popular Sarah Marie is? And they'd always say, yeah, I know that, but have you tried living with her? You know, if you're living with someone who irritates you 24 hours a day, uh, then it's a different story. Well, I guess we'll possibly see those irritating people nominated this week. Thank you very much, Chris Blackburn. When we return, the winner of last year's Big Brother, Ben Williams, and psychologist Carmel Hill analyse voting strategies and nomination patterns. I'm too scared to ask that serious question. Will I be nominated? Because the ball never lies, the ball never lies too. Will I be nominated? 100%. I'm just going to bed. Forecast is bleak. You won't have me there next year. The ball is bad. Will Mira be nominated? Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to, we're getting nominated for walking. Are we? I've got the balls from you. Go to the whole lot, you know, and it'll just be like... It's going to be... Leaves to hold another whole week, don't we? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I know, it's so good. It's like nothing's going to happen next to the Oh, you know, I think I already told you guys this, but I woke up this morning thinking... <laughs> just thinking about everyone. And I just got this big family. I told you this tonight. Yeah, she did. That's nice. Oh, love you. <laughs> You've probably been changing your theories about who might nominate who. So let's add the expert views of our Big Brother psychologist, Carmel Hill, and last year's winner, Ben Williams. Hello, Carmel. Hello, Ben. Good day, Greta. So who do we think is going to get nominated at this point, Carmel? Well, classically, uh, we see the flamboyant and dominant people get uh, voted, and certainly that's been the case in all big brothers around the world. And I think last year that definitely was the case, and um, I think there were three very dominant and flamboyant people that um, I think most people voted for. This year, um, I'm not so sure. Um, I think that some of the, well, the two dominant people are also very warm and engaging and very likeable. Do you think people at home also want to get rid of dominant flamboyant people or have they become a bit more educated? I think the audience have become a lot more educated. But the audience is not living with these people 24 hours a day. <laughs> so it really depends on how they are to live with. And Ben, is that what it felt like for you when, you when you were in the house last year? The really big characters, did you want them out of your face? Not necessarily. You just, um, people who annoyed you more than anything. Yeah. The people that just didn't fit in with the group and made things a bit different or a bit harder. But was it particularly hard after just one week or so in the house to be able to choose who it was that you didn't want to be there anymore? Your yeah, first week was very hard because you didn't really get, you knew the people but you didn't deeply know them. Yeah. But also in the middle it was probably a bit easier. But near the end it was also harder because at the end you've done the three months together. You're good friends with them, you're like family. Yeah. And you don't, you feel like you're stabbing them in the back a bit but yeah. it's part of the game isn't it? So who do you think will get nominated or do you more have a theory of who won't get nominated this week? Um, I think there's a few who can't get nominated purely because they've gone under the radar and I don't think the housemates would have any reason to nominate them. For example? Well I think Peter's been very quiet, Alex has been very quiet, Sarah, Marty seems to be a crowd favourite and also a favourite in the house. Yeah. But there's um, a few sort of stories and plots unwinding as you know yourself. And I tend to think that um, I think Shannon may be a chance to be nominated. On what what grounds? Oh, she's pretty loud and pretty out there, which sometimes is good. But if you're living with someone like that, it can be a bit much. Yeah. And she um, even said it on the episode the other night that she is very loud, but she hates being called 
a loud person, she'd prefer to be known as bubbly or an extrovert, not necessarily loud. But, you know, uh, okay. I think she might be, um, her time might be up for nominations. Turkan as well. Why do you think Turkan? She seems to be trying to call the shots a bit too much. And that's obviously just how her character is, and she seems to be very warm and, and caring, but I think that could be a bit frustrating after you know, a week and two weeks, and when, particularly when you get into the business end of it, about eight weeks to 12 weeks through. You don't want to be with someone who's saying, do this, do that. And Carmel, are you seeing any people with strategies? Yes. You are? Yes, I think Aaron uh, certainly went into the house with a strategy. And how are you seeing this playing out? Um, well, I won't see it play out to the nominations, but um, more likely than not, um, I think he might nominate someone who he believes... Uh, is a threat. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else in the house? Well, Alex has been a bit quiet, so um, it'll be interesting to see who he votes for, because um, I think he certainly has a plan as well. Yeah. Mm. So what is that week like when you nominate? Were you nominated a couple of times last year? I was nominated about two or three times. Yeah. And um, I think I got first lead, I was nominated about the eighth week or the seventh week or yeah. somewhere down that part. And it's, a, it's like you're on death row. Is it? It really is. And particularly it's going to be six days this time. So you get nominated on Mondays, isn't it? Yeah. And then evicted on Sundays. So six days is a long time to be counting the minutes. So would the housemates be feeling quite ostracised once they'd been nominated? Oh yes, it's a very difficult time, particularly the first week. All housemates went in not wanting to be the first. Is that a pride issue as well? A huge pride issue. Mm. And they see it as public embarrassment. So it's a very difficult issue. So, as one who has been there and done that, can you give us uh, a bit of an idea as to what you think would be the success of a strategy if you went into the house? Personally, I don't think you can because there are so many variables and they change every day. So you've just got to really be yourself. And I think when people are putting on a charade, like, I don't care if you're Russell Crowe or Meg Ryan or if you're a paid actor, you can't act for three months. But how hard is it to be yourself? It, we tended to forget the cameras were on us. Yeah, but there's a lot of pressure from other personalities, isn't there? Well, everyone has their own place in the, in the house, but first week or two, people are getting to know each other, opening up, being warm with each other. And then you start to know after about two or three weeks, everyone sort of roll in the house and what makes them tick inside. But I think in about two or three weeks, We'll really be seeing everyone with their true colours. Okay. So, just to summarise, Carmel, you're thinking who will be nominated? Well, I can't pick it because I think it's easier to um, pick what the audience will vote for than it is to, to work yes. out what the housemates will nominate because we're not getting the extremes oh, um, of personalities them, and we're not living with them. So, some no. of the people that we think are charming and delightful and, and funny and loud but, but funny um, could be absolutely a pain to live with. I think there's be about well, like. There's going to be three nominated. I'm going to put four in there. I'm going to have Turkan, yeah. Shannon, yeah. Damien, and Katrina. I think three of the people who will be nominated will be from that group. And that's the first time we've heard Damien suggested. What What are your reasons for that? Oh, he just he's, um, looks like a pretty cool character. And I think that might get under a few of the people's skin. In particular, the other blokes? Maybe some of the other guys. They may be a bit jealous with him because he looks like he's a bit of a ladies' man, a bit of a Casanova, so... A few of the guys might have their tail up about that and give him a vote or two. Okay. Well, we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much, Carmel. Thank you, Ben. Good to see you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, whichever way the vote goes tomorrow, it will be agonising. Tears? Check. Anguish? Check. Shock? Check. Betrayal? Well, anything is possible. Tomorrow night from 7.30, we will cross live to the House to see the nomination votes cast housemate by housemate. It'll be the first step on someone's journey towards the exit. One of the 12 must walk onto the eviction stage next Sunday. That's a certainty. The question is, who? Who will you send home early? We'll find out who the nominees are tomorrow. The honeymoon will be over. Big Brother is getting serious. I'm Gretel Colleen. Good night. Hey, Zara here.